one second, please. Um, ba bum. Um. We're ready. So, hello there. I I am Macreth and I am making a fun game, a fun game for Terra Battle, uh, which is a game that's not longer available. So, uh, here we have Terra uh, the Tabletop Simulator, which is the the game uh, with which I am uh, recreating how you play Terra Battle, and um, let's start with the with the basic rules, shall we? Uh, so to begin with, a little bit of introduction. As you know, Terra Battle used to be a mobile game uh, from uh, with which you formed teams of adventurers to tackle waves of enemies in a sci-fi. Uh, fantasy plot. Uh, however, the game got shut down and it was no longer accessible, which sucked. I uh, waited many years and I hoped that somehow, sometime, uh, Terra Battle would make its way back to me, but it didn't. <sighs> so I gave up waiting and decided to make it myself. So, since I had a little bit of experience, um, doing a uh, fun game board games I did another one for Lobotomy Corporation before uh, I have some uh, knowledge on how to so I started doing the things you see <laughs> back here so uh, how did I recreate this? well after a long process of doing uh, failure after failure because the many versions I did before were Oh, uh, hello, Excel. Thanks for the follow. Um, uh, yeah, I failed many times because I did a very complex thing where you had to take into account how to um, how to consider uh, the health of your units, the health of your enemies. It was hellish uh, trying to make sense of it. So I discarded that and started doing something else. The next version was a chess-like game uh, in which uh, I tried using the the triangle of carnates, that uh, rock paper scissors system, uh, to make something uh, I could work with to make a PvP. However, that was once again too complex and too uh, detached from the original Terra Battle. So uh, after that, I tried to do making a deck builder which wasn't bad in fact uh, the current version is very similar to what uh, that deck building game was about however after thinking hey how can i make this better i remember why don't i just make it like in the original a team of six units against the enemies and well i finally managed to make this version so, how well, how is this played? Well, you have the enemies, which are these guys. On, the, on their backs we have each of their, the areas they belong to. And we have uh, six enemies for every area. Uh, a campaign is a group of areas put together, so to say. And the goal of the game is beating all the monsters from a campaign. Uh, since there are 42 uh, chapters or areas in the game, in the original, I, I have divided in three different campaigns. The first one, which is the only one I have made thus far, is uh, this one we have here, and it's um, Maker, uh, with, which has the first 15 campaigns, uh, campaigns uh, areas. The second one, Animata, uh, goes from area 16 to 30, and the last one, Progenitors, is the last uh, 12 areas. So, um, 
you firstly, uh, to start a game, uh, you choose which campaign you wish to play. In this case, <laughs> we're going to be playing the first one because it's the only one I have made uh, yeah, still. So, uh, what do we do with this? Uh, so, to adjust the difficulty of the campaign, you can decide whether you want to be facing all of the enemies available from each area at once, or you could decrease the amount by taking uh, any amount of monsters out of each area. Well, uh, since the game hasn't been tested enough yet, I, we will be playing at the highest difficulty, so with all the enemies that is. Once you have uh, done that, um, then you would have the uh, the game the campaign deck, which is this. Although I am missing some which are down here. I was thinking, what's wrong? I don't have all the cards I needed. So, um, once you have uh, chosen what campaign you wish to play, then you proceed to draw your initial team. Uh, the team you will be drawing will be differently for each campaign, because campaign 1 will be easier, campaign 2 will be a little bit, little bit harder, while campaign 3 will be uh, <laughs> An attempt at making this the worst experience I can make for you because I want you to lose at that and never try. I am a mean person. <laughs> so, uh, for the first campaign, you draw just six normal adventurers that are not recorded because, as you can see, there are uh, two piles of cards here. We have normal uh, units and normal rarity recorded units. Uh, we'll be talking more about this later. So, uh, for the first campaign, you will be drawing six of these. For campaign two, we'll, you will add two rare units instead of... Uh, I, I mean, you will be drawing four normal units and two rare. And for the last campaign, it will be three and three. Alright, that's pretty much it about how to set a game up. That didn't go well. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, firstly, let's go with the tutorial about how can you play this thing. What's on an adventurer car? So, over here we have our adventurers. Grace, Kuska, oh, how I loved making these cards. Uh, so much nostalgia. <laughs> so, uh, let's see the, the different elements that make these cards. Firstly, we have the variety, which is represented on the top uh, right corner of the card. No N is for normal and is silver, R is for rare and S is for a special. As you can see, they also have the colors for each rarity. I took a very long time to recreate all of these letters and I made full use. Uh, <laughs> so I decided to use all of these letters to put their names. Too much effort, so I, ha I need to, uh, <laughs> to put it somewhere. I'm proud of it, okay? <laughs> then um, we have the weapons. Which is Grace is an archer, Kuska is a staff user, while he has was woman, Bajana is a spare user, and as such. The if you have played Terra Battle before, then you will know that there is this rock, paper, scissor system around bow, spares and swords. Bow beats spare, spare beats sword, and sword beats um, bow. Mm. I haven't really given too much thought to a game mode about PvP yet, so the only use uh, the weapon has f for now is when you are pincering enemies or doing attacks. So, uh, how does that work? Let's say we have an Orbling here and we have Grace. If we manage to pincer uh, the Orbling with two units, then it's different. Uh, th different. Different things happen whether you have vantage, in this case you wouldn't, or you have vantage. If you have vantage, then you gain uh, two points, which are represented on this corner. 
I mean, no. If you have vantage, you gain an extra point. If you don't, you only get two points. Which is an, ex an encouragement to try to play smart and use your uh, units uh, to defeat enemies uh, who has vantage over. Uh, I'm doing a poor job at expressing this, but uh, <laughs> bear with me. So, uh, different enemies has different weapons and staffs. They don't have any weaknesses. However, to make things interesting, I have introduced a skill which allows uh, certain weapons to become strong against them, and thus uh, increasing the uh, points given when you defeat them. What else do we have? We have the skills. Pincer, Revive... This is the skill I was talking about, Triangle of Carnage. Spats, uh, Rebo, Negotiator, well, all those skills we got to new. I have prepared a few cards over here for uh, a quick explanation of the entire skill pool. Um, after skills, we have Recodification. Uh, at first, I was just going to make the cards, the cards as normal, but I decided I'd give uh, their goals a try, and I think I got them pretty good because it introduced a new dimension to how you play this game. So, below the weapon symbol, you have this tiny R, which represents whether the card can be recodified or not. So, for example, Grace can be recorded into Grace Lambda, while Kuska doesn't have any recodification. Recodi uh, non recodified units like race uh, are weaker than units that cannot be recodified at all. However, once they are recodified, they grow stronger. One way to easily see this is by checking the number below the rarity. For example, uh, this uh, number represents moves or steps. Once we start discussing uh, the movement of the cards, uh, you will understand what this means, but uh, Grace, uh, for example, has three steps, Kuska has four, while Grace uh, Lambda has five. And uh, each rarity up increases these values by one. So, for example, uh, Samatha has four because it can be recodified, while Vajana has five. And once you recodify Samatha, she has six uh, moves. Um, the sim uh, similar things happens with uh, the special class. And uh, lastly, uh, we have to talk about this little thing down here. The, it's a representation of the grid. The board game is a 6x6 six six grid uh, for doing the battle. And these tiny squares are re a representation uh, which uh, show where these units have uh, some kind of vantage over. Let's see. Mm, let's say we had Val over here. If she wanted to move, uh, let's say, down, she could take three steps because that's the amount of moves she has. So that would be one, two, and three. Or you could do one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, however you wish. However, Val has uh, these tiles enlightened, so she has vantage over this corner. What does this mean? When you move onto a tile that uh, your unit or your mover doesn't have uh, mm, control over, so to say, it takes a step, so this would be one step. However, whenever they step into a tile, they have free range then that won't count as a step, so this will be one, 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 because it won't increase to two because this is her free space. So if we did uh, one, uh, this won't count, two, she could re enter here if she wished. She can move freely around these tiles. Since uh, you will want to uh, move around a lot to um, put units into place, you will probably be making full use of this uh, 
free tiles, which is how you usually call them, free tiles, uh, to move your mover around uh, all you can and get them into position to pincer your enemies. And well, diagonal movement is a lit I tried making it uh, a little bit like in the in the original. If you want to move to the left, that's one step. If you move one down, that's another step. If you want to move diagonally, that's two steps because it's left and down. However, uh, you can take advantage of other units that are near you. For example, if Renova was here and Val wanted to move here, Val could use Renova as a pivot and this step would only take one. And this can also be used with enemies, so instead of it being Renova, it could have been an archer and you could do it. However, uh, as you could guess, if two enemies if two enemies are uh, joining uh, corners, you cannot move past them because you need to be placed here in order to move down or here, but you cannot switch tiles with enemies. I mean, I haven't added yet that skill. <laughs> I don't know whether I'll do that. Anyway, that's it for diag diagonal movement. And what else? What else did we have? Yep. Uh, so uh, now let's check what enemies are like. Enemies also have uh, their weapon, they have their rarity, this enemy costs only one point when defeated, and this enemy costs two. And uh, since these are elites, these, are, these guys are more dangerous than these ones. Down here we have their move patterns. Uh, an arrow without a circle behind it means this unit will move only once in whatever direction the arrow points. So, for example, if we had this mage here, whenever uh, you end your turn, you have moved, uh, let's say, you had moved Val uh, Latadan and placed her there, doing nothing, then the mage would move like that. If a unit has, however, an arrow with a circle behind it, it will move um, all the way. To the edge. For instance, if we had this orbling here, it would move all the way down, and then, since it also has an arrow up, it would move all the way back up and uh, defeat any any enemy it encounters on its way. Similarly to uh, your units, whenever uh, whenever a uh, uh, how to say this is... Yes, let's do this like this. Whenever an enemy moves onto another enemy, they switch styles. So this will shake uh, things up because you will need to calculate what's the positioning like, where will they move, when will they flip. Uh, because, for, for instance, if you think this is going to target this and uh, move Kuska out of the way, then this healer would uh, move like that push the orbling there, move them move like that, uh, like that, and the orbling would kill, uh, well, whatever is in this column. Then, uh, what else, what else? Um, yes, uh, let's say we have an orbling here, and we, oh, we are very dumb, we forgot to move Grace out of the way, which is something very plausible in case you forget or miscalculate, uh, then the Orbling will move down and kill Grace and she will be uh, put out of the board. And then the Orbling will occupy the tile where Grace used to be and stop moving. So at max you can only use one unit per enemy. Although, <laughs> yes, do not try that challenge how to get all your entire team beaten in one turn. Eh, it would be interesting, but I won't be giving that a try anytime soon. At least not in purpose. Um, let's see. So, I have, uh, I have already explained the um, diagonal movement and uh, how uh, your units and how enemies move. 
I also explained what's on a monster card, but I failed to explain yet what is this little icon down here. These are their skills, because if only we had moving bodies that would have made things a little bit uninteresting, and I wanted them to have something spicier about them. So, this is the list of skills we have. Let's go one by one. So, Thunder. My nemesis. Uh, thunder enemies are pretty scary. They are fast. Upon deployment, they move imme immediately. So, as you can see, Dracorin has a pretty decent movement range. If Dracorin were to be placed here, he would move one up, all the way down, and imagine there was nothing here. All the way down, and another step up. That take that covers a lot of range. You do not want this unit to <laughs> to pick one one of your units. It basically can insta kill somebody. And well, let me tell you, this is an early unit. <laughs> but it's okay because we have revivers for that. Uh, it's not so bad. Now, where do things start going badly whenever this thing enters? It's deadly. Shadow element. Whenever this thing is present, any unit you lose gets immediately uh, taken out of the game. So, uh, let's say we have our unit Grace and she gets killed somehow. Then, Normally, you would place her there, and at the end of the round, if you had someone la like Kuska who has a revive skill, you could bring her back into your team. However, if Stone Mage is present, then that doesn't happen. She gets uh, taken out of the game immediately, and you won't be reviving her ever in the rest of the campaign. So these guys are also dangerous. You could imagine how badly a combination of these two would go. Yeah, something like that would make a good content for that last campaign. <laughs> um, well, next one. Hot. A hot unit will make all of your seekers or adventurers move one tile up whenever this gets deployed. So we roll coordinates, row 2, column 3, we place the unit here, and all of these units move one up. What happens when there is someone in the way? It get pushed. If this one this one was already here when this got deployed and it was couldn't move up, so it won't move up. What happens when you add the opposite element, chili, then they move one down. But only your units. Now, this one is also dangerous. Heavy. When rolling the coordinates, if it can land over a seeker, uh, whether in normal with a number normal combination of coordinates or by flipping them, then it does, and then it kills that unit. For instance, if we roll the row to column one, then this unit would step onto Grace and kill her. However, the very same would happen if this had been a uh, 1-2, because then you can flip this around and take this. Ah, risky stuff. Insta death is never fun, but eh, it at least forces you to uh, get new units and try to build something strong again. Then we have the resilient units. <laughs> The ones you want dead as fast as possible, but they will be sticking around and make uh, your life a uh, torture. <laughs> Resilient. Whenever this unit is about to be defeated, it will survive all attacks it receives during, uh, during this turn. But it only works during the turn. It only works once. So first you attack this, it loses the, its protection, and then you attack it again, and it's dead. To reflect that it has lost its protection, you add one of these chips onto it. 
so its skill is exhausted. And this guy is undying. Whenever you kill it, instead of adding it to the kill pool, to the to the place where you wherever you keep your dead uh, enemies, it rolls again its coordinates and get placed there and exhausts its use. However, since Arachnobot has two uses of this skill, it will <laughs> redeploy once more when it is defeated a second time, so you must beat it three times. A proper boss, if I, I, if I may say so myself. <sighs> then, we have Toxic. Whenever you have a unit adjacent to a Toxic enemy, this unit cannot move. And by that, you represent it by flipping it. This one cannot, n can neither be moved or participate in a pincer attack. So if I push, if I placed Pal here, they uh, they wouldn't attack this. <laughs> and if we left Val here, uh, Grace here, she would die against poor Val. Uh, poor, um, poor Grace, we're killing her so many times in this stream. But, however, you can move her by flipping tiles, Val uh, can save her and move out of the way of this mothbot. That's it for Deadly, and then we have Oppressive. Since, uh, well, I wanted to convert this into a card game, so I uh, gave it a chance, I had to rework how mm, the timer worked. In the original, in the original, you pick the card and have some time to move all over the floor, <laughs> um, put all your units into position. However, um, this um, since we have the step system I have created, then you have a limited amount of steps you can take, and you must plan uh, smartly. So to say. So it's a strategy game this time. This unit lowers, uh, when this unit is around, it lowers the amount of steps you can take by one. So uh, Grace and Bulb would only be able to move two, Bayana would be able to move four, and, and so on. There is also a unit that has double of this skill, so that would make it a double penalty. <laughs> That's no fun, so you better have better good movers for when that unit drops. And lastly, we have these two, these two units. To explain these two, um, we should uh, also talk about two skills from the adventurers. So, we have pincer skills and we have chain skills. Uh, but I tested it earlier, and Renova wasn't a good um, a good uh, example for what I'm trying to explain here. So, what does this mean? This is dodgy. Dodgy units uh, cannot be killed by uh, pincer skills. Uh, correct me. That's chain skills that don't work on these units. So, for example. If we, um, let's say, we are attacking, oh, so many cards here, this must be confusing. So, Val and Grace are pincering this chainer, but Grace also have a pincer skill. Whenever a unit has that has a pincer skill performs a normal pincer, they activate that skill, since she has this range. That means she can attack either here or here, and since there is an enemy, she can kill it. However, since this, this unit has a dodge, a dodgy skill, she cannot be killed. The same is uh, the opposite is true for these units. This, uh, while this uh, unit is, um, evades uh, pincer skills, this unit evades chain skills. For instance, Cerro has a skill that allows her to attack on here, on here, on here, on here. Since there is an enemy and she is chained 
with a unit that is performing a pincer, she can activate her skill. However, Chainer has a ephemeral attribute to him, so it will dodge the, uh, the attack. And that's it for the enemy skills. And now uh, that we know that all that, I will explain all the adventurer skills at the end. <laughs> but let's first know now that that has been that now that's that's out of the way. Let's see how you do battle. So at the beginning of the game, uh, let's put this away. You deploy your units, uh, your initial team, imagine this was uh, six normal units. You can place them on any of their free tile units, uh, free root tiles. For instance, we can we could place Grace here, Kuska could be here, Bar could be here, so that Kuska and Grace can instantly pincer someone, some unlucky fellow that lands here. Uh, Bajana could go on the fourth row. Samatha, pretty much the same. Um, Renova could go here. And that would be our starting positioning. And then, uh, once we have done that, we roll the dice and start placing enemies. And once we have placed all the enemies from one area, the combat starts. You, firstly, you pick your mover, move the mover around, flip all you can, and try to pincer. Once you have uh, made that move, the enemies will move, uh, will take their moves in this order. First, the units on the leftmost column with, will make their move first, and then within the same column. The unit that is the most, uh, the closest to the up area, will take the move first. So, for instance, if we had uh, Orblin here and this guy is, I don't know, here and there, Orblin would move first, would do this and this, and this guy would stay in the same place because this would push him there, and then on the way back, he would put it in the same direction. And, oh, I forgot, <laughs> I have to explain something else about the movement. What happens when a unit try to, tries to move in a direction they cannot move towards? For instance, now Knight cannot move here, so you, fl you flip it around 180 degrees. And then, instead of going first here and then there, because that would be certainly confusing. You just take first the left arrow and then the next one. So knight would move like this and like this. What happens if the knight has already started moving when... Uh, let's say knight is here. He moves here but then he cannot move anymore. Does he flip like this? The answer is no. Instead of moving, uh, of flipping around, he will take the opposite direction, so he will move downwards. Something that may happen during your your game is that, for example, this poor Hailer is here. She moves in this direction, and her second arrow will make her uh, move there, but she cannot, so she will get virtually stuck there. Next time, when she tries to move once again, she will flip around. But unluckily for her, for her, the arrow still doesn't allow her to to exit her situation. Now, if a, let's say a, knight, a warrior was here and he decided to save her, then everything would be good because then she would be able to flip and get back into the same conundrum. Anyway. Um, yeah, let's continue. So, uh, the example was this, so uh, this unit would move like this and like that. These two would 
move like that. Then healer would move like this and like this. This guy would uh, take the movement like that. This mage would move like this. Healer is going places. And the warrior would move once like that. Because that's all he can move in one direction. And then you would be able to move once again. Rinse and repeat all the way until you have beaten everyone. Or you are only left with a single unit, in which case that's game over. And that will be the end of the campaign for you. So, uh, what happens when you beat everyone in one area? So, let's say we have defeated this uh, Orbling, we have defeated the Knight with Jungle Vantage, and the rest have been defeated normally. No. Then, uh, these guys are our points. Between rounds, we may spend these points uh, to improve our team. Um, ah, before that, uh, to prevent stalling, because you can easily just move things out of the way and try finding a good position to get started in the fight, uh, we don't want that, because that would make things feel eternal. So. To encourage the player to not stall, uh, each turn they uh, stall, they lose one point from the points they have already accumulated. However, this is not as bad as it looks, because you don't save points in between rounds, so you beat one area, spend all the points you can, and those you do not spend get lost. So. At the start of uh, any round, you won't be facing this issue. Then, what can we do with these uh, points? Well, firstly, we can spend 5 points to recruit a, no a new normal unit. Let's say, uh, we somehow... Uh, a stone mage was around, Val got killed, and we lost her forever, and then we are only with 5 units left. Then, we spend for points to recruit a new normal unit. That's a unit that was wasn't meant to be there. We recruit a new unit, Kapori. Uh, another thing we can do is spend five points to replace one of your units by a units by a units that's a higher rarity. For example, we can replace a Grace by a new rare unit. Or we could replace Bajana with a special unit. Or another thing we can do is spending two points to recode. So uh, let's say we wanted to recode Grace, and so we would spend two of these points and take her out and replace her by the recoded version. And oh yeah, I forgot. Whenever you're drawing a new card, whether for to replace the lost ally or to improve uh, another, you may spend one extra point to reroll. Let's say you got Pupru and you said, eh, I don't really like bows because I'm trying to build a spare team. So I want to another thing. Then you would spend one extra point and you might draw another. It's okay, I guess. Good movement. Um, however, if you do reroll, the unit you rejected will get lost. You won't be able to retrieve it again, so think carefully before you do that. Um, also, another thing that uh, you can do with points is replenishing uh, uses. Uh, skill uses, that is. Some skills have uses. For example, Kuska has a Giga Revive. He can re revive units that have been defeated twice. However, uh, in this particular case, uh, revive skills cannot be recharged. So, which skills can be recharged? That is, tap skills, such as tap switch, tap plus 2, tap stum, or tap spark. 
Uh, I will be explaining this later soon, don't worry. So we, uh, for example, let's say whenever you, since this cannot be um, recharged, you each time you spend one of its charges, you add a chip to represent that it cannot uh, use that skill anymore. Or in case uh, Skuska, Skuska, since he has two charges, add two chips. Then, uh, these guys, these tappers, uh, these guys have uh, chips, which represent how many times you can tap and use that skill. Once uh, you have spent all the charges, they cannot longer be activated. However, by spending this point, you can uh, replenish these uses and even go beyond the normal limits, because, well, these guys have uh, orange uh, border which represent mega skills, that is, skills that only have one use. But uh, by, replenishing uh, by replenishing the charges you may go even beyond the normal limit, at least for tap skills. So mm, that's it for what you can use your points. If you do not uh, use them, you will lose them. So. <laughs> Uh, try to make the most out of, out of them. Well, we're almost finished here. Let's see. Now, the skills. Before uh, jumping in the pool of skills, I have to explain the, the intensities. Uh, as it happened in the original Terra Battle, uh, there are um, skills with um, different intensities. We have mega skills, with, uh, which have uh, on, an orange border and have a decent range. Or, well, there are two types of skills normally. Offensive skills, which in, where intensity improves the range. For example, uh, Recorded Grace has Terabo, which improves the range she can target. Then we have Giga skills. Uh, I mean, we have a skill with three uses, which improves how many times the skill can be used. In this case, Kuska could use Giga Revive, and then he would revive two units. Uh, some units like Palpa or, uh, I don't know, 36 Eyes have uh, greater uh, intensity revive skills, so look out for that. And, uh, well, uh, we have Mega. Giga, Terra, and then we have uh, units like, um, for example, Moga has a beta skill, which is reflected by a golden uh, border for the skill. Now, well, then we can finally get started. Ah, yes, uh, th yes, 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 before I forget. Uh, mages in the original Terra Battle game uh, unleashed their skills around the Pinthard unit. They no longer do that. They use their skills around themselves, because that makes things simpler. I mean, if you have to explain to uh, someone who has never played Terra Battle before that uh, mages are special and they attack around the Pinthard unit, then that would make things really complicated, I think. So I decided to leave it at that. Pinthers attack, everyone attacks around themselves. The red dot represents themselves and the yellow tiles represents the places they can attack. So let's start with the skills. We have normal pinthers, chains, which we have already uh, discussed. Then we have dual cast. This is the skill that OP mages have. Uh, as I have already... Have I already said it? Well, uh, let's see. Nakupi, for example, can aim uh, two tiles to the right or the left around himself. But he can only target one enemy. Only one. It doesn't matter if, if he could wipe out four enemies in one move. No, he cannot attack all four of them. He can only attack one, you choose which. However, units such as Sayu can attack 
two units because she has dual cast, which allows her to attack an additional enemy. And considering she has a good uh, range, I think that justifies why these units are very, very powerful. Then um, we have Stun. Stun is similar to Toxic. Enemies that are around ad ad that are adjacent to Albert, for example, cannot move uh, when they try to move. So that's very good for preventing potential losses or any any kind of enemy movement. Then we have active and passive. Active and passive are skills that activate whenever while you are moving a unit and flip a course. For instance, do we have any? Well, we have... Yeah, well, we have Renova, who has passive spark. If Samatha were to flip tiles with her, then her skill would activate. Because that's passive. Passive is uh, if someone, anyone, uh, flips with her, the, acti the skill activates. However, there are also some skills that are uh, active. For example, if it was Harold who flipped with Valve, it doesn't matter if Valve doesn't have an active or passive skill, Harold would gain, uh, well, the, act the skill would activate. In this skill, in this case, it's plus one, so he would be able to move one step further than usual. Uh, if it's plus two, then that would be two steps further. Spark is a skill that's very, very powerful. It's exclusive to a special rarity and it goes like this. Let's say uh, we had Bajana and there was an enemy, let's say it's this Toad, Fire Toad. Um, and Renova is here. So if we flip tiles with Renova, Renova would activate passive spark. Spark allows the unit, the, the mover, Bajana in this case, to activate their offensive skill immediately without stopping your moving chain. So Pyrotoad would be defeated without a mid-movement, so to say. That's, that's powerful. Uh, which is why that's exclusive to this rarity. Uh, there is a skill that's exclusive to passive, that's passive dispatch. Whenever this unit gets flipped, it gives, it gives the mover dispatch, which we will explain soon, yes. Mm, then we have taps. The tappers. Before moving, you can use the skill by tapping it or by removing its charge and activate whatever they do. Uh, tap plus two gives whoever you choose to move two, mo two extra movement. Tap spark allows you to unleash whoever you please their uh, offensive skill. That's pretty, pretty powerful. Tap stun is decent because it allows you to uh, freeze a unit that might cause you a lot of trouble. And uh, Muto has Tab Switch, which, when used, it allows you to choose the contents of two tiles and switch them. For example, if I wanted to move Val, let's say we have Val here, and that's a pretty bad spot for Val to be, and we wanted to rescue her into this position, then we could use that skill to use it and make it happen. We could even um, switch this like that. Whatever we want to do, even if, it's, if it is empty space. Um, what else? Yes, Jungle of Carnage. As I was saying earlier, um, there are some units that have this skill. When there is a unit with Jungle of Carnage, uh, whenever they pincer a staff user, some, somebody like this, uh, like this mage for example, they gain advantage over staff users. So uh, this guy would give two points instead of one. But it wouldn't be only for Val. Any sword user would be able to do that. For example, if we had Nakupi in our team as well, 
since Ba is buffing him with Jungle of Carnage, this Stone Mage would also give uh, two points. And the same, however, uh, it, that only applies for the units with the same weapon as the user of Triangle of Skills. So Bal buffs, Bal buffs uh, swords, uh, Snipe buffs uh, bows, and Makuri buffs spears, for example. Then we have Revive Skills, which at the end of a round, when you are going to spend this, you may spend one of the charges to revive a unit that has been defeated in the previous round. However, they cannot revive uh, units that have been removed from the game. Also, uh, let's say Bajana got defeated in the round and we don't have Kuskai in our team. Then we have no revivers and we fail to find any reviver to re reanimate her. Then, if we fail to revive her, she gets taken out of the game as well. So, be careful. <laughs> Uh, counter. A unit with counter, uh, and they have um, this uh, particular trait to them. Now that I think about it, damn, these kids are strong. Far. Yeah, uh, excuse, excuse this. Damn, these are too powerful now that I'm thinking about it. Oh well, I should nerf them, actually. Well, too bad for them. <laughs> Let me explain. Whenever uh, a unit with counter gets attacked by an enemy, if this unit has vantage over the attacking unit, for example, if uh, this enemy who moves down attacked Fall, since Bow has vantage over Spare, the defeated unit would be Oculus instead, and even with vantage points, which is great. You don't have to bother moving far around because she's, she's okay. The reason why I was saying that this is maybe too strong for a normal unit is because she also has Triangle of Carnage, which would make any uh, any mage incapable of defeating this unit. That's too strong, I mean. That's something I was planning to, to give for some special units in this rarity, for example. Um, where is Leo? Leo has exactly that. I mean, that, that's understandable. Leo is a special unit. <laughs> she could, she should be able to do that ma as much. But Far is not that strong. She's only a normal unit. Well, uh, what else? Where were we? Uh, counter Ribbon. Um, let's re return this here. Ribbon. Whenever a unit with Ribbon, uh, well, when they have Ribbon, this unit is immune, ag immune against Hot, Chili, Toxic, and Deadly. So it's uh, immune against Hot, Chili, Deadly, and Toxic. So they're pretty safe units. Even if this is around, they won't be removed from the game if they are defeated you will be able to re revive them later, if, <laughs> if you had the reviver for that, that is. Uh, negotiator. Ah no, Dispatch. Dispatch um, overrules a resilient and undying. So if we had this uh, pesky uh, arachnobot around and we wanted to defeat it uh, without having to spend all of its uh, revives, we could use Bayana to instantly kill it, even with Vantage. So that's that's pretty pretty good. And the same goes for uh, the same goes for resilient units. Negotiator. Negotiator is a skill that makes things interesting. Uh, where do I have my my negotiator unit? Um. Yep, I must have forgotten about it. Ah, oh, no, yes, I had her here. Samatha. When Samatha defeats an enemy, since she has Negotiator, that enemy becomes a temporal ally. Temporal allies are removed at the end of the round, 
and uh, at the round means that when you defeat all enemies from the area. Uh, you cannot move this unit. This unit, however, can participate in pincer skills and can be flipped. Uh, and they can also be killed by enemies, so beware of that. However, that might be good because you can use them as sh mid shields. So that's something good you can make with Negotiator. Then we have Treasure Hunter. Uh, Treasure Hunter... Damn it, did I forget it all as well? I... I have. So... Mm, let's see... Not this wing... This wing. She has Treasure Hunter. This skill allows you to... Whatever the Triangle of Carnage is like... She always, uh, whatever she kills, it always has an extra point. So if she kills this uh, knight, well, <laughs> she has one touch against this knight, so let's forget that ever happened. Over this ma uh, over this mage, this mage would be defeated with one touch. So that's good, great. However, uh, that was a good example actually. Uh, since Reken has one touch over the knight, Normally, she would already be producing that extra point, and that treasure hunter should improve it further, and this knight should cost 3 points, right? No. The limit for this skill is 2 for normal units and 3 for elites, so it's not that great. It's just convenient to have, but not OP. At least that's not my purpose. I don't know what it will be like once I start testing it. Let's return uh, Riken there. And come on, we're almost done. And Chain Plus. Chain Plus. You, you might know what this is like. Ah, yes, and also, Amimari was not graced with a, re a recodified version, so anyway, I gave her Chain Plus skill. Yes, uh, so when a unit is. Um, doing a pincer, uh, let's say we wanted to use Renova to kill this knight, uh, actually not a knight, an orbling because knight has dot G. Renova, uh, oh, uh, so Treasure Hunter is a stronger version of Triangle of Carnage, uh, not necessarily, um, Triangle of Carnage allows you to uh, buff every single unit that has the same weapon as the user of Triangle of Carnage. Uh, Treasure Hunter only buffs the unit with that skill. So you only get that um, that bonification whenever uh, Riken is the one doing the killing. So it's not that uh, mm, strong, you could say. I mean, what's stronger? Having a team, an entire team of sword users that can kill every uh, magician that comes around your way? Or just a Riken who... Well, that's still useful, to be fair. Because you can uh, get, be strong against uh, spares. Anyway, that. Uh, what were, where were we? Yes, chain. Um, so... Uh, these two units are pincering uh, this mage. And uh, unluckily for us, Renova is. Mm, this enemy is out of range of Renova's skill if she were here. Because Renova can only attack here, 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 here. However, uh, and since she. If she were here, she could not uh, be aligned with the pincering units she would not be able to activate her chain skill. However, that changes when chain plus gets in the way. It's basically uh, how it works in the original game. It works as a extender, chain extender. Actually, that was the original name, but I summed it to chain plus. So, since uh, uh, Mami Mari is here, the chain would go from here to there. And Renova would be happy and she would be able to kill this orblim. Yay! And uh, that's pretty much it. We're done. That's all the rules. So, now that's 
that that's out of the way, I can finally start a campaign. So, let's um, uh, load the, this and get started, shall we? Well, 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 let's see who will be driving for our starting team. Shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This pretty much feels like when you're uh, <laughs> pulling from the gacha. <laughs> I can already see the the envelope. <laughs> so, Elver, nice. Bagunar, decent. Val, oh, I like this. I like this. Grace, alright, Aileen. That's nice. Yes, yes. A revive this early is pretty much is pretty much a uh, necessity, considering what's going to be meeting us in area two. And Diana, well, uh, we don't have any spare, but that's pretty much good, especially considering we got well. So let's distribute them around the board. Mm, I want this unit to be. In the way because she has passive one. Uh, she Grace could be here. Elvern could be here. I want him to be able to stun a lot of enemies. Diana could be here because that allows her to have her range of attack, and she's within her moving zone. Uh, but she's going to remain here and Kuska, uh, Kuska Bagunar here. Good. So let's draw the units. What will it be? What will it be? Row three, column one. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Five, two. Five four three five uh, this I mean and one five and only one left. Oh also since this has been uh, deployed every one of your units goes one tile down and since these two were in the way, they got pushed. And lastly, 3-4. Three, 3-4, four. Uh, three, four, it's taken, so 4-3, it's also taken, so we have to reroll this. And it doesn't have uh, <laughs> heavy, so yeah, no death. <laughs> no death there. Here, not a bad spot. Okay. Let's get this thing going. Well, hmm. so um, this guy is going to move all the way here and move these things here. So I'd like to kill this. This is a little bit in a bad spot for me. Yes, a bad spot. I don't want to move Grace and Elvern out of, out of the way, especially since I can keep this knight in place. Um, this archer will move like this because he cannot move down there, so it will go there. This unit will go there and there. So Eileen is actually in danger, and I don't want Eileen to die yet. Um, yes. So, who do, who do I want to kill, and where can I put things around so that I don't die? Hmm. I think I can take the warrior. The warrior should be a pretty much safe kill. And I don't have a spare user, so whoever kills it is enough. So, I need a Ling out of the way, and the rest can stay. Yes, Diana. Hmm. 
No, she doesn't have a good enough reach. I was thinking on attempting to put uh, Diana in range to kill the mage, but she wouldn't even be able to get aligned with the pincers for the night, for the warrior. So let's go for something simple. Um, she can move freely here, freely there. She flips tiles with grace and moves once there. So we did this movement. Uh, wait a second. No, we actually did too. <laughs> this is her free zone. She moved here, switch tiles. That was one move and then two moves. So this warrior gets taken down and let's start moving things. Move here, move here. This guy moves here. There. This guy cannot move because Alberon is there to keep him in place. The mage moves and this guy goes down and goes back up. That's a bad placement for Horblin to be now that I think about it. But it's a little bit out of the way so I won't be having much issue with him. This moves around again. Oh, oh. So, who do I want to kill next? This mage would be a good target. Do I have some way to. Oh, ah, no, this knight is in the way. I wanted. I. If I could have made this pin there. With but Diana here, I could have beaten this Orbling, but Knight is in the way. Oh no. Anyways. Mm. This healer could be very, very easily defeated. Ah, that's too bad. This guy has dodge. So even if Diana stays here and I make this pincer, this uh, kill is not going to happen because this guy dodges um, chain skills, which is Diana's case. Um, yes, so. So, let's kill this healer. Uh, he has passive one, so she can move one freely here. She can move here, and that would cost one. But since uh, we got this skill, passive one, Grace now can move up to four tiles. So, one, uh, three tile, and two. Uh, being there, but there's nobody there. So, uh, since we got ba uh, Bar with Triangle of Carnage, we defeated... No, not Badugunar. What was I doing? Not Badugunar. Leave our Lizard King alone. Uh, like that. We have now three points. Things move once again. You're still <laughs> in place. This moves there. Pam pam. So, the next unit we might defeat. Uh, the Mage. Although defeating this archer might be a good idea because when it goes back here it will be in the Orblin's range and I do not want that. Yes, the mage. I should kill him down. Hmm. Damn. I could have done something much better than that. Had I not killed a healer and instead a mo well, I could have killed the healer, but had I moved Elvern out of the way instead, uh, the knight would have moved after the mage took their move, and then they would be here. And that's a very juicy position, because I could do this, this, and this, and make a double pincer. Alas, uh, I didn't, so... <laughs> I shouldn't be going so fast, I guess. <laughs> So, let's see. Mm -hmm. One, two, and three. Uh, actually, no. No, no, no. Not like that. 
I want Wagunar to be the one doing it. So, Wagunar hops onto his free tile in the third column, takes one step, um, this is free, switches, this is the second step, and the third step. So, we defeated this archer with Triangle Vantage. Hooray! Damn it, Knight, you're not doing much. Selvern is there just sitting there with you, taking a sweet cup of tea, <laughs> maybe slicing in some poison. <laughs> this knight is not accomplishing much this fight, is it? So this move, this goes all the way back there, there is nothing there, everything's good to go. So let's uh mm, well she hops in into her free range, free range, free wait, where is well <laughs> she has disappeared. Free range, free range and free range. No moves met, spent plus one style point. And this is defeated with an extra point because Pal or God has Triangle of Carnage. That is why this skill is so good in early game. And that is why you want to uh, stick with these units for the longest as time as possible. Once you uh, achieve to score something like, I don't know, um, Peirna, who has Triangle of Skill, uh, Triangle of Skill, Triangle of Carnage, uh, you can maybe uh, get rid of Pal uh, because this unit is better. But until then, this unit is godlike. After all, she is the Holy Trinity. Then, only one enemy left. Moves, moves. Ah, oh, no, two enemies left. That is. <laughs> so. Um. Oh no, we don't have that many movers. Well, yes, we have Diana. We can use Diana, actually. So, she hops into column 4, the column, which is her column. She moves here to the row 3, which also she has some free tiles. Moves here, freely, still. <laughs> this is all free movement, damn, Diana is good. And... Uh, one step. Mm, I could have attempted to you put Grace in there, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't have had enough steps to achieve that. So at least I kill the knight. Now to finish this up, we have. Can I somehow get Grace there? I want that extra point. <laughs> um. I don't think so. That would be, let's see. One, three, two, three, 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 three. And she won't be able to move anymore, so no, she cannot. So, anyway. Let's just. Mm, move ball, really? One, two, and three. And um, this unit is defeated. Ta da! That's one round one over. So, let's spend this point, shall we? Uh, what do we have here? We could recode a lot of units. We can literally recode everyone! Wow! <laughs> so, um, another thing I forgot to say is that units that have uh, uses, like Elvern, he has a revive that can be spent. Whenever they recode, that uh, use gets refreshed. That's the only way to recover revive uh, uses. So you do not want to uh, recode them early. Use them uh, strategically. So who are we recoding? Val should pretty much get recorded because she is insane once she's recorded. Let me show you. This is insane movement. Just look at that. That's nasty. I can do anything I like 
in these two rows. That's... yes. Yes. Give her to me. I want. Nice. Um, Diana Ricode had ribbon and extended movement. Diana is already a pretty good uh, mover as she is because she has this column and this row. Almost. Uh, I could record her. I don't know if I need so many uh, healers. Elven is useful because he has a uh, revive and stun, and they, he won't. Oh, now that I think about it, if a thunder enemy spawns here, they won't be able to move because Elvern is stunning them. Oh, yes, please. Elvern is staying. Elvern is life. Elvern is love. Um, Aileen. Aileen, I don't think she's so useful. Let's see her recorded form. Uh, not good movement, I should probably buff her. Had some uh, free range in the middle, so she has... I mean, these four tiles... Oops. These four tiles are pretty much uh, too away for, for them to be meaningful. But if I move... I don't know, if I take... Um, yeah, if I take... This, which he already has, and this, which he already has, and move these two here, and these two there. That would be a pretty, uh, pretty better movement. So yeah, I will buff her in that way, because otherwise she's too useless. I mean, yikes. Okay, I will note it down later. For but for now, I think I'm going to replace her with a better rarity unit. Am I? I'm thinking of upgrading Bagunas. Where is Bagunas? Yeah. That's an incredibly good movement. But he's, he has passive plus one, so I won't be trying to move him as often. But that's a pretty good movement still. And he will have five movement on top of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how many points do I have left? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, excuse me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, down. I have many. Uh, but not enough for those uh, for what I was thinking of. I wanted to record Grace as well because she would get a Terra skill, which is incredibly good. Yeah, I want Terra skill. And Bagunar, he wasn't getting. Yeah, only range. Yeah, give me Grace. I hope she doesn't die like it happened to me last time I played. <laughs> So, another point. I have already spent 4 points. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points. Let's upgrade someone. Gaiga! Oh, a dispatch unit! Yes! Yes! Nice! That's incredibly useful. And she has chain uh, Giga Arrow. That's Damn, I got lucky. So, hey Ling is going to get replaced. I'm sorry, Ling. I promise I will buff you later. So, don't worry. Uh, in fact, I'm going to leave her down here so that I remember. Um, you place... Uh, whenever you do this, you put the new wit on top of the unit that got replaced tile. Um... Well, that's it. Oh yes, let's spend four, uh, five points. So I have an extra point left. I could have free roll, but Kaiga is a pretty good addition to my team. So I will, I won't be using this point. Eh, too bad. 
Well, let's roll the next crew. Next, next area. Row three, column one. Corf, okay. Pretty much irrelevant. Row two, column six is taken, so columns uh, both are taken. So let's reroll this. Oh, Dracorin, oh, oh, I'm scared. Hold me. Row four, column two. So he moves immediately because he has this cursed skill. However, we got incredibly lucky with the column because he will only do this. One, all the way down, and up. So they switch titles. Yes! Phew, nobody died. You! Row two, column one. Damn, this. I like this. I like this a lot. <laughs> Alright, next one. Let's hope tragedy doesn't strike and this to get taken. So row four, this row four, so no, row five that is. So this one is taken. So this one this. Oh, okay. So Welburn is in danger. Not good. Now, as for the last enemy from Garia 2, another one with danger skill. 4-6. I'm not feeling good about this. Oh no. Oh no. 4-6. And immediately moves. One down, one down. And since he cannot go that way, he goes this way. Hold on. Yes. But I was exactly what I was fearing. No, we just lost Kaiga. <laughs> Damn it. <sighs> anyway, move on. We will bring her back to life if Elvern is still kicking around. Oh no! Oh no! This is bad. We can no longer do this wonderful pincer because Spinner is caught in the way. Damn you! <laughs> F, F's in the chat. <laughs> anyway. Ah, let's, let's see. <sighs> well, that's it for... No, no, that's not all of it. There's more. Row 1, column 3. And yes, this is the row. That's one. So, pretty much irrelevant. He will move... There and there. Wait. Yes, 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 yes. So, this will move like that, because he cannot move left. You will move the, there, there, and there. Huh? That's a quite interesting movement. This will move there and there. Uh, oh no, wait. I have to consider this first. See? That's, that's, that's the risky part of this game. So you will be going there, and there, and finish here. You will be moving twice here, so this unit will be here. Uh, you will be moving like this. Like this, so this unit will be end here, and like this, this unit moves like this, and like this, and this unit moves like he will have to be flipped around once again because he will no longer be able to move in that way, and he will move like this and this. Okay, pretty much meaningless. And lastly, you are in the way, so I'm going to murder you, we or bling. Nothing personal. And we have the perfect uh, duo, uh, duo for that. Magunar and Grace. Now, how do we want to do this? Because Grace has Terra Pinther. She can attack here and here. So I could kill Dracorin. It's too bad that I cannot kill Dracorin with uh, 
weapon triangle, triangle of carnage advantage. But oh well, spinner it happened. So I'd like to have Felburn in a position where he can make his skill shine. Hmm. Let's see. I need to get Grace there and Bauner there. How can I do this? The rest, the rest are fine, right? This will move like this, like this, and. Oh no, I cannot occupy any of these tiles because the spinner reach will attack there. So I cannot attack we or bling either. And we already know that this tile is going to be attacked a lot. So luckily for us, we cannot kill anybody in this turn. So instead of doing that, we will plan for the next round. Uh, the next turn, that is. So, we know this guy is going to end up here, so we want to... to have somebody ready for that. Although this guy is pretty much irrelevant. He's not bothering anyone down there. This is where all the action is bad. <laughs> uh, I want this unit dead and this unit dead. These two are scary. The elites of the area. So you're going to end up here if memory serves me right. <laughs> Actually, no, Jacqueline will get stuck here because when he gets here, he will move there. He won't move. He won't be able to move either here or there. So, haha, <laughs> take that, Jacqueline. Suits you well. Um. Well. So. Ba -bam, ba -bam. Yeah. Let's prepare for this one. All right. So, um, uh, mm, this is free tile. Um, one, uh, one move. Free tile. Free tile. Two moves and three moves. All right. This is Stalin. Yes. If I had any points accumulated, I would have had to pay the, the penalty. But since I wasn't exactly able uh, able to get started, so I won't get punished. So let's move things up. You move there and there and there, there, there. So these guys go one up. You move there and there. So these guys moves there. You attempt to move, but you fail. You're pathetic. So on your next turn, you will get flipped and do this. All right. Ah, well, but this guy will move you first. So let's do all of those things first. So he moves you there. And goes all the way down. Oh. Thank God, I wasn't. I actually didn't. Oh, I didn't prepare for that eventuality. I got lucky. It could have perfectly killed Grace, and I would have been met with the decision of who uh, do I revive, Kaiga or Grace Lambda. Well, well. That's good. Let's see, let's see. So, what will be the next moves? He will move one down, one there, and finish here. And you will end up here. So you will move to there, so you will be end, uh, end up there. You will then move one there and one there. You won't be messing with anyone. You cannot move in that direction, so you will go back. Actually, forget I said anything. We have to start from here because this is the first column. So you move here and there. So you will do this, this, and that. Damn, this place is packed with action. Damn, I'm not liking that. 
you will end up here, you will move them here and there, so Dracorin will end up here, a position I'm not liking, because then he will take on the next turn this movement, and that's a later movement. And then Diana is actually in danger, but that's no biggie because Diana is bailing out of there. Yes. Um, you cannot move in that direction, so you will move like that. No, like that and that. Alright. And you cannot move, so you will go... Yes, you will go like that. And that. Um, what else, what else? Um, so, who do we want to kill? Hmm, actually, if we kill Sabertooth, not only we, do we kill it with Vantage, but we also uh, prevent him from moving Dracorin, so Dracorin would end up moving we Orbling and saving Grace from, from certain death. So, this would be an actual good move. And then this, this spinner reach goes all the way back there and does not bother anyone anymore. I like that, that option. So, who is going there? Who is going down there? I'm thinking of sending... Um... Ah, also, we killed this, so that's pretty good. Also, if we manage to do this pincer with Bagunar here, we can kill this Spinner Witch. Hmm, that's not a bad idea. But, ah, uh, well, well, I can just move her out of the way. So, you, I don't care about you, Sabertooth. Not yet, anyway. So, let's move Diana out of the way with our free moves. Our free moves with Val. And then get Val as farther down as we can because she is doing work. One move, two moves, three moves, and four moves. And this is pretty much Pog. Yes, nice. I mean, I could have tried to take this kill, but that wouldn't have ended well for me. So instead we do this. So, we kill this we Orbling with Weapon Vantage, so that's one point for two points for me. And Bagunar activates his chain skill and kills Spinner Reach, who is immediately next to him. No Weapon Vantage, but anyway, still a good a good move. Uh, what else happens? Nothing else. So let's resolve the rest of the moves. Sabertooth moves and um, change the Dracorin's position. So Dracorin moves, change Sabertooth's position, and ends up here. Then <laughs> Angorf moves. First Dracorin, one tail down, and then Sabertooth, one tail left, uh, right. Uh, anything else? We are bling. There. Okay. So, next turn. This guy moves first. first. So... Uh, water time. Uh, Gorf will end up here without moving anyone. Sabertooth will move here, moving Gorf one down and end up here. And then Dracorin will make a pretty big move and will misplace this We Orbling here and then un end up there. I'm like, I'm liking where this is going. I'm liking it a lot actually 
because then uh, Dracorin will be here and Weaverblin will be there. Next turn, I mean. While Sabertooth will be here and we'll have to reverse the action, thus sending him back this way. So I will be able to piece to pincer these two pretty nicely. Sounds like a plan. Let's see whether I can kill someone in this turn. This place it pecks for Ba. Baral is the only unit that can go that far. But we need someone there. Damn. That's tough. Um, alternatively, we can just kill this We Are Yeah. You know what? Let's do that. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. So, one move. Mm. Two moves. Three moves. Four moves. Five. Uh, and we're back in our free space, so we still have one move left. If we need to exit our safe area. That's it. We did it. So... Yes, 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 okay, this is that, no weapon montage for me, so that's too bad. Moves here, moves there, they switch, and you move one to the left, and you move one down, all the way up, and one down. Alright, this is the situation. Okay, what do I want to happen? I want... Um, <gasps> this! This! Diana can kill Dracorin. I like that. Although, if I put uh, Pagunar somehow here and manage to do this pincer, whoever gets here gets killed by Gorf, so scratch that. Mm. What do I want then? I cannot place anyone here because of Corf. And I am not currently capable of putting two units here, one unit here and one another here. Ah, this is not like the old game. I could do this, 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 and put it there. <laughs> but no. Uh, that's it, yes. Ah, uh, I miss the old times. But anyways, this is pretty, pretty okay, I guess. Um, yeah, so... Mm, I mean, I do want this pincer because then I can kill this Dracorin. But if it can't happen, it can't happen. So, let's see what's the best next action I can take. I can... Mm, So you, uh, you will be moving like this. I'm moving there. Oof, oof. Oh, thank God I checked. That would have been pretty deadly. Yes, pretty, pretty deadly. I need to move Grace out of the way, otherwise she's dead. So guess who's the mover? Grace. Uh, um, where is she moving? Though? One move. Uh, free space, free space. Uh, how many moves did we spend? One. Okay, only one. Um, recording is not dangerous as of now. So, two, free tile, three, four, 
and 5. Phew. I hadn't checked something. See, no, 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 no. Yes, I had checked it. Checked it all. Fine. So, um, Dracorin gets defeated with Triangle Blunt Touch. Yay! That's three points for me. Um, pincer there, 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 there. There's nobody I can pincer. And Diana <laughs> already killed Dracorin with her hair chain. So, that's good enough. And then, let's move. Like that, like that, like that, all the way down. Hmm. So you're going to move like that. And then up, down. I don't like that. So... I cannot kill Gorf. So I should try to kill uh, Sabertooth. How can I do that? Um... The answer would be to put somehow uh, Bagunar here and get Bal there. Although I could also consider using uh, Diana. She is better than she looks like them. I should have recodified her. What do I mean by this? Look. She can hop uh, one step and hop onto her column. Uh, move down here. Mm, that's her second step. And this is her th third step, so no. That doesn't work. Yes, Diana was there. Ah, so, what do I do with this? Mm, One step, two steps, three steps, four steps, five steps. Yeah, I cannot do it. I'm stalling a one turn. So, how do I want to stall? You're going to move. Uh, yes, you're going to move like that, like that. And like that, like that. So you two guys are going to end up there. And you... This is a pretty deadly zone. So I want at least... Uh, what? Hey Victoria, thanks for the follow. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're doing a Terra Battle Fan Gaming. In case you were wondering what this was about. Um... So, um, yes, so this will move here and there, and this is this, here and there. So, I want somebody to be ready to jump in here, and somebody to get ready to get in there, while someone is already here. So, let's do some shenanigans, shall we? Uh -uh. Uh, aha! Ah. Uh, I take it back. I won't ever get rid of the uh, of Val Lambda, even if <laughs> even if I end up getting um, Pirna, who is a similar unit with better skills. This movement is too good to pass <laughs> to pass up. Um, then we're going to. I mean, that's pretty good already. Mm, is it good enough though? I... I would say so, yes. Yes, alright, let's, let's leave things there. So, Gorf moves there and there, and Sabertooth moves all the way up here. Now, the movement we were all waiting for. We switch Bad Grace into place, we move Diana into position, one step, two steps, and into the free zone. And this is pretty much it! Yay! So, being there like this, 
defeated with a bow, so weapon, band, weapon bandage. And uh, Triangle of Carnage, we also have weapon bandage here. Damn. I am never giving Val up. I will save her whatever I have to do. <laughs> She's not dying on me. Never. Ever. <laughs> Alright, that's it for the round. So, since we have uh, Elvern, who has revive, let's spend his revive and reanimate Gaiga. When you reanimate, by the way, you, spend, uh, you place them on one of their free range tiles, so I will be placing her there. Nice, everything is going so right. Uh, because now I'm going to recode Elburn, he's going to get back his revive, he's going to have an even better movement. Then things are good looking up. But oh well, uh, I will be. I don't think I will engage with the next area yet, so I will be just spending these points and uh, end the stream. So let's get down to business. Um, Dracorin is 3 points, uh, we want to recode some things. Oh, no, Gaia cannot be recorded. As, I don't know why uh, I thought she could. Too bad. Though I'm, I have to admit, I am a little bit scared of what she would look like <laughs> if she recorded. I mean, looking at what happened with Haguna. <laughs> anyway. Um, Bagunar, he was pretty useful. Considering we're keeping Val to the bitter end, Bagunar is going to be pretty useful, wherever he is. And besides, while Val uh, reigns over this upper part, Bagunar could uh, become the mover for the center column. Yes, I like that idea, so let's record him. Two points spent, and give me... Vagunar Lambda. Alright. What else? What else? Um, yes, let's recall the Elvern as well. Though, what can I do with this? I have 3 points, 5 points, and another 5 points. I could even upgrade rarities, 2, rati two entire rarities. Who would I uh, give up? Diana was pretty useful, I mean. She was. Grace, with her skill, she's pretty useful when you can move her around. She pairs incredibly well with Pal, <laughs> as you would have expected of the two starter units of the game. Um, Gaiga. Well, I mean, I need to keep her dispatch skill around, at least until I get past some areas with many uh, undying units or units with resilient skill. Bagunar, I just recorded him to strengthen my power of... Uh, my power with... Um, with swords. How is Elvern recorded? Uh, he has a good range. Stum is still useful. He would recover his uh, his uh, revive charge. Mm. I'm really tempted to use that. Okay, I'm thinking we're doing going to do things like this. We spend five points and draw a card. Bona. That's... that's well. That's good, that's good. I can record her. Not immediately. Uh, that's another rule I forgot to mention. When you draw a unit, you cannot recodify it immediately. You, they have to survive one round to be able to be recodified. So, Bona. She recodifies into a better unit with revive and passive one. Uh, let's see what she was like. She gets Ribbon and she has a good all-rounder range. Hmm. It's... it's good. I mean, yes, I'd like to recodify her. So I'm thinking... I'm going to give up Elburn. I'm sorry, boy. 
but you must go. Good, good. Uh, thank you for all your hard work. So, so we have four, uh, five points remaining. We can either, we can only either free code Diana or increase her rarity. And whoever I pull, that will have to do. Since I now have a Bagunar, I feel more confident in this column. To be fair. Yes, let's let's risk it. Hold on a minute. I like shuffling it again. And uh, Olver, yes. Uh, in case you didn't notice by my uh, account uh, logo, Olver is my favorite unit. <laughs> so, yes, very much yes, because I can even recodify him. And yes, very much yes. So, I'm sorry Diana, but Olver is here to stay. Recodified Olver looks like this. He has active two. That's that's nuts. And he has this two rows. Damn, I feel good about this. But dominating this place. Olver dominating this one. Uh, Pagunar dominating this place. Yes, things are looking up. So... Uh, two, four, and five. That's it. <sighs> That's all I have planned for today. Uh, I guess next string I might continue from here and into the next area. So I might just stream some more uh, process or working on the board game. I mean, I have also set it up so I can show you guys how I work on Illustrator, <laughs> the dull part. But it's also interesting because you see how things get made. And who knows, you could also even tell me suggestions in there and I could uh, add those suggestions. If I agree with them, that is. Well, I mean, I'm trying to give this uh, some uh, game design. If it doesn't deviate too much, I might consider it. So, thank you for staying here with me, that will be it. I hope you enjoyed this the explanation of the rules, I hope you find this project interesting and you're looking forward to today I, I publish it in the workshop for Tabletop Simulator. Uh, and well, uh, thank you again. Thank you, Oko Chaos. <laughs> Well, I'll see you around, so bye-bye!